you know, the school was right here. We practiced right here, coming down that ramp that we will see. I was on the track team and- Track team? I was on the track team. Man, well-rounded athlete. Yeah, I played <laughs> basketball, I was on the track team, actually shot through the shot put. Jeez. And, and the shot put is on a field that's right over here. And then the rest of the runners were over there. And so, uh, yeah, we'd come down this, this hill. I always remember walking down that hill thinking, oh, you're looking around and just wondering what kind of day it's going to be. Hot, after school, we're practicing. And you could hear the, the cars in the background, the parkway. Just kind of made you realize where you were. Just playing football on the field, off the parkway. You practiced here, but you didn't play here, though, Did right? not play here. We played down at Hannes Wagner Field in Carnegie. And which is uh, really funny because I mean, most of our the practices we had, Coach Zaney, Coach Yost, <laughs> used to pull us up here. And we didn't have many players either. We only had about uh, one of my senior year. I think we had 23 guys on the team. And when we went from offense to defense, my brother came in. <laughs> uh, Ten of us played both ways. So it was. Um, but we were a close team. I, I always will say, and you know that's. I never realized the camaraderie in having people that you like and who are your friends, who you hang out with, and you translate that friendship onto the field, and all of a sudden in the fourth quarter of a game, you're looking at the same guy. It's a brotherhood. You know, I'm, I'm there for you. You okay? Get, you help your own guy back up. And so it's just about inspiring the guys around you because I love you, because you're, we're brothers in this thing together. And that's, that started here. Just a special place. There used to be a there used to be a parking lot over there, and actually, I came up there, and my father taught me how to drive in that parking lot. <laughs> so we'd drive past the school and down to the parking lot, and you know, taught me everything from that standpoint. Then I'd drive back and I'd have to stop because then you have to get back in the car. And so it was. Um, I learned how to drive here. I learned to play well, played football here, practiced here, and uh, went to school right up there. You know, my dad loved baseball. I love basketball. I became much more passionate about football, but not early on. Okay. You know, and I, and I just, I love to play basketball because you can just go to, down to a gym that was in Ingram or go down to an outside court. And, and we did, I had some friends, that's all we do is play a lot of basketball. And, you know, football was something, okay, in the fall we'll do that. But football's not, you know, and we play pickup games. But it wasn't anything to that extent. And all of a sudden you realize you start going, number one, you're, you're not fast, <laughs> um, you can't jump. Okay, so then all of a sudden you get in football and you say, wow, you know, on this field right here, you know, I love this. I can get mad and express myself. I can just show my emotion, be passionate about something. When I walk off this field, that's, that's, that's another element. There's a responsibility, of, you know, to my, from my parents and have to be a, you know, student, but on this field, to me, like come down here, you know, I walk between the lines. It was like, <sighs> I love this territory, you know. And it's just about the passion and the great coaches I had, and even high school. Like I, like I said, Bill Yost, um, he spent a lot of time with me. Tried teaching me how to long snap. I long snap my senior year, uh, last couple of years, and. Um, yeah, started here. You always mention your coaches. I've noticed that about you. Yeah. I mean, all the, you remember them by name. Yeah. You remember all the in, things that led up to it. Why yeah. is that? Well, I, I, that coaches and teachers, because you know they are the ones that kind of guide you. Yeah. They are the ones that teach you. I mean, and like you listen to them, and you do things for them. I think one of the guys I remember the most was, was Mr. Jones, who was a math teacher. And I, I took calculus my senior year, and I was, that's the one thing I was just really good at was, was, was with numbers. And, because he was a great teacher. He'd be on that chalkboard, and you'd think he was like in there, okay, you do this, and, 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 and then you get down here with the coaches, it's like they're pushing you. Let's go, come on, Cower. You're better than that. You're right, coach, I am. You're right, you're right. Call me out, that's good. I'm, I'm, I, you know, it's like I said, when they, when they quit calling you, it's quit talking to you, that's when it's time to think maybe they don't care about you. You know, it's like, you know, teachers, you know, some people are very good visually. Some people you can just talk to, you know, um, uh, communicate with and they, they get it. So having to find some people like, that's a great job. They need a pat in the back because they're not really self-confident. Other people are way, way too self-confident, too confident, probably overconfident. So now you gotta make sure that they don't get too complacent. 
So it's like the fine line of complacency and you know insecurity that that you're trying to kind of keep that balance in there. And it's the same thing with coaching, but it's the same thing with teaching as well. The same thing with parenting. So I just all these things are inter intertweed and intertwined in my mind. The other thing you seem to mention a lot is just the memories here of your dad and your mother and yeah. the role they play in your lives. And I know teachers are important, but man, parents, when you look back and when you become one, I think you realize how important parenting is. Yeah, and I, you know, listen, my father was a worker, but my mom, I mean, I wonder how many times I would leave this field and it's going to be 6.30. We'd be out here after practice and baby coach would say, we were, we're not practicing well enough, so we'd stay out here. I'd go up there and shower. I'd be home at 7 o'clock, 7.30. Everybody else had eaten. She always had my dinner waiting for me. Everybody was coming and going. My other brother at times, if I was playing basketball, he was wrestling. So we always had this flexibility in our lives because of our parents. It allowed us to do these things after school. It wasn't a formal sit-down dinner. We never right. had that because everybody's always coming and going. And I think the more I look back on that, the more I just respect that you know, as a parent, to sit there and just be able to say, listen, okay, you gotta do this, now you gotta get your schoolwork done too, but make sure you're out here, something to eat in between. And I was always trying to eat something in between, so I could never gain weight. So, but she would always have this, uh, whatever it was, there was, there was enough for me to have two or three servings of every, whatever <laughs> dinner was. So, <laughs> this is where I played high school. But I definitely wanna take you to where it really all started. It was at the Craft and Athletic Field. Okay.